love and longing. Check every single wall, floor, and step in the stairwell. We're rebuilding this entire old manor from the ground up, Lala Harkle calls out to get people moving. Setting down and actually arriving at the old building near Nodok had finally driven it home. This was their new home and there was nothing that could be done about it. Ula, Jam, check around the grounds. There's supposed to be a jump pad. I want it uncovered before tonight, she continues as a couple of Apuk break away from the rushing crowd. And everyone remember to reinforce Yoru selves with Axiom. We don't know if this old building is going to fall down on us or take the weight. I don't want to drag a doctor here on our first day. Things start to move along as the manor is proven to be in decent shape. It's old, out of fashion, and destabilized in some parts. But the main building? It's not only enormous but reinforced and has Axiom runes to preserve it. Some paint and carpets and most of the rooms are fine. Even the windows are well preserved. There is a sense of old strength to the building that has Lala nodding. This will be a place from where they will grow. She senses a presence approaching and turns to see, oh, oh dear. Lady Tear, it is an honor to meet you, Lala Harkul says, bowing to the Baroness. Thank you, I do hope your family does not mind the building in question. It is old, but storied. The family that used to live here was lost several generations ago. They had business with the Orega girls and its matriarch was considered one of the higher ups. You mean, if you've seen Bone Chewer 12, Blood Fangs, then you have a general idea of what happened. Oh, yes, oh, Uth Tyr says, and there's a chuckle behind them. Oh, oh, this will be gold, Koga notes with a grin. Why is there a sorcerer here? I mean, why are you here, sir? Lala Harkle asks in a distressed tone. I offered to Woodwalker here and she accepted, Koga says plainly. I see, Lala says, looking back to the large building. This is a reminder that we're being watched, isn't it? It's also an honest offer, Uth Tyr confirms. Let's be frank, if a sorcerer wants into some place they're going to get in, this way, if we make certain paths easy, we know where to look for them. Like leaving your stance deliberately open from certain angles so that you know where an attack is coming from, Koga adds in. Unless the enemy knows that such a thing is being done and instead of going for the bait, they just power through where you're strongest but actually weak and ignoring. Lala Harkle snaps back. Oh, clever! Where was this intelligence when it came to, no, that's done, let it go, Koga says to himself. I'm here to tell you that we've been talking things over and so long as things are going well on this end, there will be visitation with the children. Also, as the younger sorcerers start to grow stronger, they'll eventually be able to visit on a whim. How are they actually doing? Lala asks and Koga smiles. The fighting between the groups is dying down fairly quickly mostly because they all know that if they try to hit someone, they're suddenly going to be too far away to actually hit anyone, and throwing things means the person in question is moved instead, Koga says. So none of them are hurt? No more than the normal scrapes and bruises from little children running around all over the place and playing. Are they eating well? As well as they're willing to. Some of them are stubborn pieces of work and will get huffy at us and not eat. It usually means they're going to have a snack in about a half hour though, so we've gotten good at predicting it. Have they been eating their organ meat? That's where they get their vitamins. We usually try to start the day with a sweet meat porridge with sausage. The meat in the porridge is mashed up liver, and a major ingredient of sausage is intestine, Koga says and Lala lets out a breath she hadn't known she had been holding and nods. Thank you, I... It's all I can do to worry, Lala says. I understand, but we are trying to help you. You've not made it easy, but we are helping you, Koga says. It doesn't feel like it, Lala says and holds up a hand as Koga opens his mouth. I know, a new home away from the bar lease. 
a chance for our noble title, and while they're not with us, our children cared for so we can focus on rebuilding. I understand it's good. It doesn't mean it feels good. So long as your feelings aren't making your choices, then you'll do fine, Koga assures her. Which brings us to what kind of duties the Harkel will be having here in the Tier Barony. It involves the badly depleted forces of Nodok and the attack not long ago. Uthtir begins and Lala nods. The Jate Barlas is of course the one to walk up to the person clearly in charge of the madness when they arrive. He's a slight sort and vaguely familiar. Her heart jumps into her throat when he turns and she realizes she just stomped up to the Duke Hart Garan. Would you be the head of the Barlees family? He asks, and she stops before nodding. I am Jate Barlees. There is no official matriarch, but when I speak, the Barlis listens, Jate says, and Hart Garan nods before turning away. Good. Now the foundations of this old building and the bunkers beneath it that once served as armories are in good shape. However, there was a lack of proper preservation runes on the walls and ceilings. Therefore, it will be built anew and properly reinforced this time. I apologize for the inconvenience about this, he says, and she stands beside him. I am taking a risk with you. The military forces of my land are pitiful, yes, but the trade deals and agreements we have with the surrounding provinces have prevented war for a long time. What's changed? Jate Barlas asks. Me. My family was strong before. Now it is merely me. Many of the old agreements are being left unrenewed by the other side. They are snubbing me and attempting to play their games of power and ownership. I will not allow my people, my land, and our way of life to be swept aside by the whims of another. Have you thought of remaking your family? Are you not a bachelor? I have numerous wives, many of them pregnant. I also have several adoptive children. However, I am the only current eligible holder of my titles and powers. All of my wives are beholden to a matriarch or patriarch that controls them, and therefore if it falls to them as regent due to their child being the appropriate heir, my duchy is all but lost. It won't be until my daughters and sons are old enough to inherit proper that the duchy will be secure again. Wait, do you think that... I think that as those that would absorb my duchy into their lands are on a time limit, that they may try something to force it. Until my children are of age, I am vulnerable, and my own supposed wives are potential enemies. My adopted sons and daughters can preserve the Gurun, but that is still three years away. Hart Gurin says, which means that a sudden dangerous uptick in crime, in disunity, in any number of things could be used to attack me. You've been fighting infiltrators. Yes, I have. I have given you and your family the opportunity to rise again as nobility in exchange for your help in these trying times. Even if there is a victory and we have time enough for all my sons and daughters to reach the age of inheritance, there will still be problems after. Problems from a source that you're very familiar with. The Harkul? No, vengeance, Hart Gurin says. It has been a time since you've played the games of nobility and royalty, but I assure you, it's just as bloodthirsty as your feud with the Harkul. It's just restraint is needed a great deal more. So what do you want of us? You find people kicking up trouble, you make trouble for them. I need guards at the gate. I need guards in the courtyard. I can almost taste the blood soon to be spilt. Can you do that? Can you change from feuding fighter to stalwart soldier? Hart Guran asks. Matriarch Barlis, are your troops ready to defend the duchy? I, yes, however, we won't be able to do much without a proper base of operations. About that, forewoman. Can you bring the plans over here, please? We need to see the blueprints of the building. Hart Curran calls out, and in short order, he has a holographic display showing the size of the manor. Now, your main concern will be the capital, Alarush City. That's where all the focus is going to be, either on the disruption of it, criminal activity being artificially increased, or other such things. And the other towns and cities, 
Jate Barless asks. With a dedicated force to Alarush, I can spread out my guards to the other areas and reinforce them as well. But that can only take place after a grace period, where your family learns the ins and outs of protecting Alarush. Hart Guron explains and Jate Barless nods. I see now. Jate begins before there's a sudden blast of movement as a series of axiom runes start dragging all the materials into proper position. In seconds, the framework of the building is in place and the workers start shifting the runes so that the next level can be built. Hart Guron says nothing for a moment. Then he indicates the blueprints again. Now, most important to your duties will be this room here. There's going to be a great deal of communication equipment in here, and you have a question. Why not have us based in the city itself? She asks him. Are you saying you want no rest or break from your duties? He asks in return. Oh, that, that is an excellent point, she says, and he nods. Good, now is there anything else? Do you have sufficient groceries and supplies? The building will be finished within the hour, Hart Garan asks, and Jate shakes her head. Very well. He pulls out a communicator and types in a message quickly. I must return to my manor for business purposes. One of my staff will be here shortly. She will take you and others to a nearby grocery store to buy the foods you need. Just like that? You're an investment. There is a time to spend and a time to save. Right now, it is time to spend. Hart Guron says. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to return to work. Then he's gone. There is a sense of axiom, but it's distant and distorted. It wasn't from him, but the backwash of something pulling him back. Hmm. Both sides are doing rather well, Vernon notes to himself after he finished checking in on both families. Things are a little hectic at the moment, but both families were busy. The Barless perhaps more than the Harkul, but the Barless also had more and stronger support to handle that business. You know, all things considered, I'm really not sure how to grade this, Rx Youth notes wood walking in behind him. Oh? Vernon asks as he turns away from the Barless moving into their newly completed home and to his fellow sorcerer. Well, you got exactly what you wanted, which is normally a perfect score. But there's no one dead, which usually means a complete failure that's so bad you have to go on another rampage. I wasn't trying to kill them, you know, which makes this so weird. Do we score your rampage on blood spilled? Precious little was spilled from your enemies, but you've hurled up so much that it would be up there in the records. The Burnstone says as he considers. One point sticks with Vernon, though. You have a scoring system for a sorceress rampage, he asks, and the older man shrugs. Sort of. It's unofficial. There are official things for sorcerers? Mm, fair, Rx Huth notes. Still, back to it. You both do and don't score in creativity because while what you did was very unique, you were borrowing the notes of a holy book and... Can you please get to the point? I dub thee the bloody prophet. Eric's youth says blankly, and Vernon is left blinking. And no, there's no getting out of it. Have fun. Then Eric's youth wood walks away with a mocking grin, and Vernon crosses his arms. Are they going to somehow make it official? Yes, Eric's youth says, wood walking back in to say that and that alone before wood walking back out. 